fresh, fresh fire. I want what you desire. I'm going to burn for you. Give me a fresh, fresh fire. Give me a fresh, fresh fire. I want what you desire. excited for you to hear not only from God's word but also her own life. It burns up everything but you. Come throw a couple logs on the fire. Cause I wanna burn. Not just a spark, not just a flame. I wanna burn for you. Cause a man on fire doesn't care what he looks like. Doesn't care what he sounds like. A man on fire doesn't care what he looks like. Care what he sounds like, care what he lives like. I wanna burn for you, I wanna burn for you. Oh, so set me ablaze, set me on fire. I can't contain it, I can't contain it. Oh, set me ablaze, set me on fire. Oh, see, God, if I burn, I'll burn for you. So, God, if I burn, I'll burn for you. Oh, tell him tonight. 
Well, good morning. I don't know where you guys are at this morning, but I just want to invite you to stand up and join us as we sing. Um, we're going to do this song. It's a new song that we did last week, but I'm just going to give you a fair warning. If you're not awake yet, it's probably going to wake you up. So just say I didn't, or don't say I didn't tell you. So <laughs> let's go ahead and worship this morning. The wonder of how you brought deliverance, the exodus of my heart. You found me, you freed me, held back the waters for my release. Oh, we always sing, You're the God who fights. You're the God who fights for me, Lord of every victory. Fire by night is the guiding light to my feet. You found me. You found me. You freed me. Held back the waters from my release. Oh, we are away. We sing, you're the God who fights. You're the God who fights for me. Lord of every victory. Hallelujah.
wake up again. Here we go. That's an awesome way to worship and start this morning, isn't it? That's awesome. Well, but as we continue to worship, why don't, we guys, uh, why don't you guys take this second to uh, say hi to someone who's standing next to you, um, and we'll jump right back in in just a second. Well, why don't I just invite you to uh, continue worshiping, worshiping with us this morning. Sing walking around these walls. around these walls and I thought by now they'd fall but you have never failed me yet I'm waiting for change to come and knowing the battle one for you have never failed me yet your promise still stands great is your faithfulness your faithfulness I'm still in your hands this is my call but it's you never failed me yet. I know the night won't last and your word will come to My heart will sing your praise again. Sing Jesus yourself. Jesus, you're still enough. And keep me within your love. And my heart will sing your praise again. Sing your promise still stands. promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. Still in your hands, this is my 
my confidence never fail your promise your promise still stands great is your faithfulness your faithfulness i'm still i'm still in your hands this is my confidence this morning we sing this with confidence we sing sing you promise still stands great is your faithfulness your faithfulness I'm still in your hands this is my confidence you never fail you promise still stands great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still, I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail me yet. You never fail me. so hard and I've tried so hard to see it it took me so long to believe it that you choose someone like me to carry your victory perfection could never earn it Take what we don't deserve and you take the broken things and 
praise Him to glory. You are my champion. The giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you've won. I am who you say I am. You crown me with confidence. I am seated in the heavenly place undefeated. With the one who has conquered it all. Now I can finally see it. You're teaching me how to receive it. To let all the striving cease. Oh, this is my victory. You are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you've won. I am who you say I am. With confidence I am seated in the heavenly place undefeated. With the one who has conquered it this morning together as we sing this. When I lift my voice and shout, every wall comes crashing down. I have the authority that Jesus has given me. When I open up my mouth, Start breaking out. I have the authority that Jesus has given me. We declare this together. We sing. When I lift my voice and shout, every wall comes crashing down. I have the authority that Jesus has given me. Start breaking out. I have the authority. Oh, Jesus has given. We sing when I open up. When I open up my mouth, miracles start breaking out. I have the authority. Jesus has given me, cause you are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you've won, I am who you say I am. Crown me with confidence, I'm seated. Heavenly place undefeated by the power of your name. I am seated in the heavenly place undefeated with the one who has conquered it all. Can we just sing that chorus that one more time? Can we sing this. You are my champion. Giants fall when you 
here stand undefeated every battle you've won i am who you say i am you crown me with confidence i am seated in the heavenly place undefeated by the power of your name i am seated in the heavenly place undefeated with the one who has conquered it all would you pray with me this morning god we thank you for being the champion of our lives we thank you that sometimes when we don't feel like we're enough or sometimes we have to master perfection we thank you that that we don't have to do that and we thank you that that you step in and fight for us and that you win every battle we thank you that even when life is good we get to we get to credit that to you and so god we thank you we thank you for the ways that you're fighting for us and and the battles that you've already won ahead of us and god we just thank you we just thank you for everything that you've been doing for us. It's in your name we pray. Amen. I well, just want to invite you to have a seat real quick. Um, and something that we, we do is we continue to worship. Um, it's just a form of, it's through the form of giving. And, and we say this every week that you guys are such generous givers that we, we're honestly really blessed. Um, we, we wouldn't be in this building if it wasn't for your guys' generous giving. Um, and so that's honestly a celebration that we get to uh, be a part of. Um, you guys are awesome at giving, so I don't really have to say much more than that, but um, it's up to the slides up there. There's uh, a few different ways that you're able to give. Um, and so before we continue this morning, I just want to pray over our offering and our tithes this morning and that God would bless that. Um, so let's pray again. We sing, or we pray, <laughs> God, um, we just ask for a blessing over our offerings and tithes this morning. Um, we thank you for the many ways that you have been, you have been in our giving, but you have been in the other side of it, that you have been in the impact it's made on the community and the impact it's made in our church. And so, God, we just thank you so much um, that this is not our money, that we don't have to figure out, uh, that we don't have to plan on us being the ones that bless it, but you're the one that blesses it, God. And so we just continually ask for that blessing over our tithes and offering and our giving this morning. And so we just thank you so much for uh, what you're going to do through that. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you want to turn your eyes to the screen, we've got a video for you. Hey Center Church, I'm so sad I can't be there with you and it's one of the best parts of my summer is getting to preach through different series, but this series is so important and so special. Um, I can think of no better person to help us understand this topic of parenting and, and having a Christ-centered home than Blake Hicks, who serves as our executive pastor for the Zero Collective. This group of churches working together to see zero lives unchanged by Jesus. And so I know some of you know him. This, some of you, this may be your very first time meeting Blake, but let's give a big center welcome to Blake Hicks. From John, I, I can we play that again where he was said some things? I mean, that might be the nicest things he's ever said about me, so I really appreciate that. What a privilege uh, and uh, just a pleasure to be with you this morning. Uh, just uh, enjoy Center Church so much, just love having the opportunity to come down here. Uh, I was talking to somebody a little bit earlier. Uh, my role is I'm at a different church every week, so I'm here this week. I was at Frontline last week. I'll be at New Life uh, next week, and then I'll be at the Story. So we have four churches, so there's typically four weeks in a month, so I find myself at a different church. 
And uh, all are a little bit unique. Um, but, you know, Frontline is my home. That's, that's where we started. Uh, but then came Center Church. And so I have just loved this church. I have I uh, just love seeing the morphing of this church from where we used to meet. When I first started here, we were looking for a place to stay. I mean, we were actually, I think, in Byron Center Middle School, and then we had just, when we uh, joined forces there, we had actually just lost our lease, so we were trying to figure out and to think where we are today. So just kudos to everybody here. Uh, as Peter said, thank you for your continued faithful giving to this church and how you've, uh, how you've continued to support that. So uh, I've heard, some of you know me, some of you don't know me, and, and the easiest way to build rapport with, with people and the way to get people to like you right away is to do uh, one of two things, either to show a puppy or to have a baby. And so I'm swinging for the fences here, and I'm going to show you both here. And so there we are. So, so on the left, let's start there, because uh, that is my puppy. Uh, that is Stella. Uh, she is 10 weeks old. She's a Portuguese water dog. We just got her just a little while ago, about two weeks ago. And so we really uh, enjoy her. She's, uh, she's an awesome little dog. And uh, we are in the stage of life right now where my wife and I have four kids, they're all married. They're all moved out. Praise God. Can I get an amen? They're not living in my basement. So it's awesome. Uh, they are out of the house there. And so we're into this next stage of life, and we got a puppy. And you start all over again with a puppy. So I promise uh, you're just going to see that picture over. You won't see her dressed up for Halloween. She won't be like that. We're not those kind of people. But if you are that kind of people, I can rest assured I will mock you. And, uh, and it's like... <laughs> Because don't dress a dog up, okay? So next to the puppy there, can we switch back one slide there? Whoops, one more. There, right there. Do you know who this is? No. You know who that is? That's John and Lindsay's little baby. That's Lennon. So that's Lennon Gorvette. Uh, we had John and Lizzie over just a week or so ago, and uh, they brought their baby over. So we had just an awesome time together. My wife loves nothing better than holding babies. And so she got to hold Lennon all night. And Lindsay loves nothing better than holding puppies. And so John and I sat in the corner and really just talked. So they were just holding babies and puppies all night. Uh, now go to the next slide there. My dog is efficient at one thing, and it's smelling dirty diapers. And so, so that, was, that was the key sign that, Lindsay, you got to take care of that. So, Well, anyway, we are in the middle of a series called Raising the Perfect Parent, and uh, it's just a great series that we're running through and taking a look at how to be uh, a great parent. So I know some of you, as I look out into this room here, maybe you're in the same stage of life as I am, and you're kind of past parenting a little bit. And uh, maybe you are in this and you don't have kids, or your kids are grown, or maybe you don't even like kids. And uh, so you're, you're listening to this parenting series, so I want to challenge you to lean in, okay? Don't, don't fall asleep for the next 30 minutes. I want you to lean in, because here's what it is. Each one of us has influence, Okay, we all have influence. And so wherever you find yourself in the spectrum here, with kids, without kids, don't like kids, whatever, you do have influence. And so here's the question I want us to wrestle with this morning. The question is, how am I using my influence as a ex? You fill in the blank there. As a grandparent, as a parent, as a brother, a sister, an aunt and uncle, a teacher, a coach, you fill in the ex, whatever your ex is, as an ex, to honor God and impact the next generation. So how are you using your influence there? So the American Psychological Association identified four distinct parenting styles, okay? So I'm gonna run through these, buckle up, we're gonna go through them pretty quick here, but the first parenting style is called an author authoritarian parent. So an author authoritarian parent is basically what it sounds like. It's, uh, their favorite saying is, because I said so. Now, their kids typically are under the thumb of an authoritarian parent, and uh, you may be an authoritarian parent, or you may not be, but here's some questions to see if you are or not. First one is, kids should be seen and not heard. When it comes to rules, it's my way or the highway, or you very rarely take a child's feelings into consideration. So you may be an authoritarian parent if that is you. Uh, if you're in the grocery store at Meijer, and you got a 17-year-old in the cart, that's probably an authoritarian parent, okay? So the next one, that's one side of the spectrum over here. The next side is the permissive parent. Permissive parents are basically what it says, like, they let things go. They want to be a friend with their kids. But it's okay if they do this. It's okay if they do that. Let kids be kids. So here's some questions to ask if you might be a permissive parent. You set the rules, but you rarely enforce them. 
You don't give out consequences very often, and you think your child will learn best with little interference from you. If you're at Meyer and this little kid is yelling and screaming and they give them everything they got, that's a permissive parent, okay? So that's the other, question. That's the other way you'll be able to tell one if you're at Meyer. Third one, somewhere in between the spectrum of authoritarian and permissive is the uninvolved parent. The uninvolved parent is this. You may ask yourself these questions. You don't ask your child about school or homework. You rarely know where your child is or whom she is with, and you don't spend much time with your child. The uninvolved parent at Meyer realizes, I don't know, did I bring my kid to Meyer? So that's a, that could be it. The last one, and I think this is where we want to all end up here, and this is the authentic parent. Authentic parents are the great parents. These are the ones you want to be. So ask yourself these questions and see if you are an authentic parent. You put a lot of effort into creating and maintaining a positive relationship with your child. You explain the reasons behind your rules, and you enforce rules and give consequences, but you take your child's feelings into consideration. So that's the, that's the, the gist of where we want to be. And Personally, that person is probably running Meyer if they have the authentic parents. The kids uh, are turning out great. But there is one more parenting style that is not recognized by the American Psychological Association that I want to introduce you to, and that is called the dry cleaner parent. Have you heard of a dry cleaner parent? No. Well, let me tell you what a dry cleaner parent is. A dry cleaner parent is a parent who abdicates the responsibility of raising that child to somebody else. It's kind of like you're dry cleaning. You have your dirty clothes, and you bring it to the dry cleaner, and the dry cleaner, what? They wash your clothes, they press your clothes, they get them all clean, and they return them back in a little bit of plastic bag. Parents do the same thing. They abdicate the responsibility of raising their children to somebody else. I've got them dirty, things at home aren't all that great. I'm going to bring them to school. School will take care of them. They'll get them all fresh and clean, send them back to me. Or better yet... They'll bring them to church, bring them to youth group, say, hey, student ministry pastor, my kid's messing up here. Can you just, like, clean them up a little bit and then send them back to me? That's what a dry cleaner parent is. And so dry cleaner parents uh, are uh, everywhere, and uh, we've seen them in church. We see them out in the world, um, not pointing fingers, but during COVID, I had, uh, we had some time to meet with our neighbors. Uh, I don't know if you had that or not, but with the quarantine going on, we actually had the opportunity to spend more time with our neighbors. And, uh, and we live in a neighborhood, and there's like six houses in the neighborhood. And so we, uh, Friday nights, we'd actually do bonfires at each other's houses and just get to know them. It was awesome. It was a wonderful time. And my neighbors, uh, one neighbor go to church, the other, other ones don't, and uh, it became very apparent during those bonfires, uh, the different values that uh, different parents have. And so we'd talk and talk and talk in there, and my wife and I would come back and we'd go like, wow, that's just interesting parenting styles that they have compared to ours. And our one neighbor strictly across the street there are particularly um, fun, and, uh, <laughs> and so... When I was thinking about a dry cleaner parent, I said to my wife, I go, I think they're dry cleaner parents. And she goes, how can you tell? And I says, here's how I can tell. Because at 8.15 in the morning during the school year, the Westside Christian School bus comes and picks up their kid. <laughs> and then that child goes to school all day, but then comes back home and then sees something totally different than what the school teaches them. That's a dry cleaner parent. So dry cleaner parents are nothing new. Uh, they are nothing new. Why... Why, or let me tell you what the problem is with dry cleaners, dry cleaner players. Pull that up. The problem with dry cleaner parents is they don't furnish their kids with the mentoring and the authentic face-to-face -face time that they require. They prefer to abdicate and pass the buck of responsibility to others. So, so why do they do this? Why, there's, there's two reasons why people become dry cleaner parents. First is uh, they just feel inadequate. Uh, Let's face it, when we have a child and they come home with us, they don't come with instructions, do they? I mean, we are, we are taking home this little bundle of joy, and we, a lot of us don't really have a clue what's going on, and we're just faking it until we make it. But uh, a lot of dry cleaner parents say, you know what, I just am not a professional in this, I don't understand this, so I'm just going to let somebody else take care of that. And they feel inadequate in doing their, their parenting duty, so they abdicate the responsibility uh, to somebody else. But the real reason that where we see a lot of this more is the fact that people are just self-centered. 
They actually don't want to give up their hobbies. They don't want to give up their sports. They don't want to give up this. They would rather take their kids and give them to somebody else to raise so that they can continue to do the things that they want to do. And, uh, and they'll justify this. They'll justify it, especially with work. They'll justify say, you know, I'm working so I can afford to do this for my family. But I, what, at what cost are they doing that for? So, as I said, uh, dry cleaner parents are nothing new. Um, they've been in uh, throughout history all the time. And so the scripture that we're actually looking at today is the Shema. It's in Deuteronomy 6. So if you want to get your Bibles, you can go ahead and turn there. Or if you have your iPads, your phones, you can start making your way there. Uh, and we're going to read this. But here's what the in the Old Testament, here's what... Um, people did back in those days. They would take their children and they'd bring them to the synagogue for the priests and the Levites to teach them. And uh, they did this a lot. You see this with a lot of the Jewish young men that they would bring there, and then that was the responsibility of the priests and Levites for the spiritual development of these children. But that was never God's intention. That was never God's intention. God's intention was the fact that the spiritual development of children would be the parents' responsibility. And that hasn't changed. And that hasn't changed. So we're going to jump into Deuteronomy 6. So let's, uh, let's jump into that. So Deuteronomy 6. I'm sorry if this font is small, okay? So my eyes are bad, so I'm going to take one step this way. But if yours are, follow along on your phone or something else. But here's what Deuteronomy 6 is. And you've probably heard this before. It says, listen, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I am giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are on the road and when you are going to bed and when you are getting up. Tie them to your hands and wear them on your forehead as reminders. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. As I read that scripture, three, three things pop out to me. Uh, three things. And so... Uh, the first thing that pops out to me is basically our example. So if you can jump to the next slide here. Our example. The second thing is our consistency. And the third thing is our word. So our example is committing yourselves wholeheartedly to these words. And so we're going to take a look at each one of these in the, next time, in the time that we have remaining here and uh, just find out what it means uh, to not be a dry, clear parent according to God's word. So our example uh, as a parent, you're sitting here today, uh, and you're, please, if you agree with this, go ahead and say an amen. This is, kids pick up more of what they see than what we say. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Don't they? They pick up more than what they see than what, than what we say. We can talk all we want, but our example, if it's not consistent with our speech, our kids aren't listening, our kids aren't buying it. They pick up on it right away. Um, Many of you who I've had contact with in, in the past here uh, at Center, I've heard my story before, but I haven't been a pastor all my life. Uh, I was in business for like 25 years and then uh, felt a call into ministry. And so for 25 years, I, um, I'm ashamed to actually almost tell you that I was uh, a dry cleaner parent. And so I didn't set a great example for my kids. I, I wish I could go back and do things over a little bit. Um, the dad that they saw on Sundays, I'd come to church. We, we belonged to a church on the other side of town here, and I thought church was important. I thought it was important that my kids went to church. I abdicated the spiritual development of, of uh, my kids to the pastors and to the student ministry pastors there. So that was on Sunday. Monday through Saturday, they saw a different dad every day. And so I wasn't a great example. So the things that my kids picked up uh, as they were growing up weren't the best habits. And so I think at some point as I, as I look over my life and as I look over where my kids, some of my kids are right now, I'm wondering because of the reason that I abdicated some of that responsibility is the path that they have chosen. And so that's a hard thing to say as a parent. That's a hard thing to take. But uh, if I'm honest also with myself, I'm following the example that was set for me. Uh, I grew up with a very authoritarian father, and I grew up with a very permissive mother. And so I didn't see a lot of the spiritual development happening in my own home. 
And as I looked at my friends, we were all basically doing the same exact thing. We, our kids would go to church, our kids would go to school, and uh, it was the responsibility of those professionals to take care of our kids. We didn't really take it upon ourselves. And so um, it, it's hard when you, when you do that. It's, as a parent, you look back on life, especially where we are now in life, my wife and I, and we think, gosh, I wish we could do that different. So as I'm sitting in here today, or I'm sitting here today, and I'm talking to you, I see some parents out here, and you're in the thick of it, okay? You're in the thick of it right now, and you have the wonderful thing of having um, the control over your children. You have the authority over your children. You can tell them what to do, you can tell them when to do it, and you can tell them how to do it. But as you get on my side of life right now, all I have is influence, and my kids can take it or leave it. And so the influence I'm trying to bring to my children in, in helping them in raising their kids and raising their families is a little bit different right now. So let's, let's jump back to the text here. It says, you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly uh, to these commands that I am giving you today. So what does it mean to commit yourself wholeheartedly to these commands? Uh, I, I wrote this down because I didn't want to mess it up. Uh, it says, uh, it means you don't have competing forces. It means your single-minded focus is to work with God for the spiritual development of your kids. And if you are abdicating your responsibility of the spiritual development of your kids, something is competing for your time. What's competing for your time? What's competing for time? Identify it and determine uh, if this is worth the time that you are spending. So that's what it means to be committed wholeheartedly. Uh, as I said, I, I wish I could do some things over, but... Um, Thankfully, our God is a God of second chances, our God is a God of third chances, our God is a God of 756 chances, and so uh, we're in that stage of life where he have grandkids right now. So grandkids are awesome, and you've probably heard it said, if you could do that first, you would, uh, and I probably would, but uh, my kids, grandkids are awesome. So we have four grandkids. Uh, I babysit three of them on every Friday, and we call it Bee Paw Friday. Okay, I'm B Paw, by the way. So, uh, with a name like Hicks, you had to have something fun in front of it. So, B Paw Hicks is my is my name. So, I should be down in you know Mississippi or something, sitting on a boat with a corn cob pipe and a and a fishing pole or something. But uh, so I'm B Paw Hicks, and uh, Fridays my grandkids come over. My daughter uh, and my son-in-law both work on that day, and my wife works on that day. So I have the kids all by myself, and uh, I take care of them. And People will say to me, say, man, that's so nice of you. And I'm like, yeah, I love it. And other people will say, you know, that's awesome that uh, you can do that so that your daughter and your son-in-law don't have to pay for child care. And, and I'll say to them, I'll say, you know what, it, it, that's a result. That is not the reason. A result is they don't have to pay child care. The reason I do that is so that I can have that second and third chance of building into the spiritual development of my, gen of my grandkids. Um, you see, I, I, I sort of miss that with my own kids. And so what I'm doing right now is I'm partnering with my daughter and my son-in-law for the spiritual development of my grandchildren. Because I want to look back on my life. And I want to look back in generations. And I want to see that a faithfulness to God carried through from generation to generation. Our God is a God of second and third chances. What example right now are you setting for your kids? What example are you setting for the people that you have influence over? That's really important. Second thing that we look at uh, when we see that scripture uh, is consistency. So our consistency. Scripture says uh, of our consistency, it says, repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are on the road when you are going to bed, and when you are getting up. It, isn't it hard to be consistent? I mean, it is hard to be consistent. We make New Year's resolutions every year in January, and they say if you do it for 21 days, it becomes a habit. I mean, how many are still doing their New Year's resolution? We're almost into September here really quick, or, and uh, are we doing our New Year's resolution? No, we're not. Uh, most of us are not. Consistency is just really, really hard. And in fact, if we're honest with ourselves, the only thing that we're really consistent at is being inconsistent. And so, but our kids, our kids see this. And, and why is it so hard to be consistent with our kids? And as I was thinking about this, this is the reason I came up. 
they just wear us down, don't they? They just wear us down. Uh, Maybe you did this. Maybe you're better than me, but I did this as a kid. I says, uh, if I didn't, if I wanted something, I went to one parent real quick, and if I didn't get it, where did I go? I went to the other parent because I knew if I went to the other parent, then I might, I might get to, I might get the answer. So I had a very authoritarian father, and I had a very permissive mother. And so I was able to know that it's probably going to get a no over here, but I might get a yes over here. So it's just really hard to be consistent with our kids. Uh, Scripture says here in Galatians uh, 6, verse 9, it says, uh, Let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. Consistency takes discipline, and discipline is hard to be disciplined at something. We, uh, I want to be careful here as, as we talk about uh, consistency. So uh, you may have heard this scripture in the past, uh, uh, train up a child in the way they should go, and when they are older, they sh- shall not depart from it. You see some shaking of the hands in there. Um, that's, a, that's, a, that's a scripture that you'll find that a lot of parents will use, especially if a child has kind of maybe gone a different route than where they should have gone. And so... Uh, I want to be real careful and say that promise is, in the, is not in, it's in the book of Proverbs. It's not in the book of promises, okay? So it's a little different. Proverbs are general truths that will come, but it's not a promise that every ch- child is going to follow that way. Um, our God is a God of promises. He makes a promise to us. And if we are consistent and we follow him, he will, he, he will answer our prayers in due time. It does take time. But if we're following our God and we are consistent in it, um, our God is faithful and just to hear our prayers and to answer those. And so we have to show our example and we have to be consistent. And the third thing that we have to do here that the Scripture talks about is we have to be right in our words. And so Scripture says here in the words, it says, talk about them when you are at home and when you are on the road, when you are going to bed and when you are getting up. Tie them to your hands and wear them on your forehead as reminders. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Words are important. I think we would all agree if we, if we look back on our lives, words have a, had a significant impact on many of us. Um, I'm, a, I'm a words guy. Words, words of affirmation are my love language. Uh, you can forget the gifts, forget the time, Forget uh, the touch, the back rubs. Well, maybe don't forget the back rubs. I kind of like those, but uh, uh, words of affirmation, man. You tell me I did a good job. You tell me I did well. You tell me that way to go or something like that. You fill my tank for weeks on end. And uh, I know there, as I look out here, some of you guys aren't words of affirmation. You're a, my wife is a, is a time person. If I give her time, that's her, that's her love language. But uh, for most of us, words will fit in there somewhere. And I'll tell you what, I have never met a kid who is not a words of affirmation kid. You tell a child that they've done well. You tell a child that they, they did good. You tell a child that way to go. I mean, their face just beams with that. They just love to hear that. So aside from being a, a words of affirmation guy, I'm a sports guy too. And so... I love sports. I've coached most every sports. Uh, as I said, I probably abdicated, I, not probably, I did abdicate the spiritual development of my children to others. I did not abdicate the sports development to others, okay? I took that. And if you look at the two, obviously the spiritual development had much more of an impact, but I love to coach my kids sports. And whether it be football, whether it be basketball, um, whether soccer, whatever, I coach the sport. And I, not only did I have the privilege of coaching my own kids, but I coached a lot of other kids. And within that, you know, there's, there's just something when you get a kid and they're struggling with it, and you look in their eye and you tell them they can do something, and you believe in them, and then you see them succeed. There's just no greater feeling as a coach. Um, I love the fact that we are uh, able to, uh, to say that over our kids. So as I'm as I'm talking up here this morning, as I'm thinking about that, what, what words are you saying over your children? What words are you saying over those you have influence on? Are the words that are coming out of your mouth words that lift them up, words that build them up, 
words that send them on their way. It's hard sometimes, especially for some of us if words that were spoken over us years before are still having an impact. So maybe for you, words were spoken to you that were hurtful and not helpful as you were growing up. Maybe words were spoken over you that said you weren't valued, that you didn't measure up. Maybe somebody labeled you when you were younger and they told you you were fat or you were stupid or you were lazy. Or maybe for you, words are swirling in your head that nobody spoke over you, but just words that you have thought about yourself and you just keep repeating those words and you can't get past them. Can I just speak some words over you today of what God thinks of you? Let me, let me tell you what God thinks of you. God says you are highly valued. God says you are his creation. God says you are chosen, that you are his son, that you are his daughter. And God says you are loved. Are we loving like our God loves? All three of those things have to work together in order for us to be uh, not be dry cleaner parents. Our example, our consistency, and our words. If they're not working together, if we only get two out of the three, it's just not, not going to fit. So if, you get, if your example uh, doesn't line up with your words or your consistency, uh, you're just a hypocrite. I think we see that a lot. If your example doesn't line up with what your words are, you're consistent about it, you're just a hypocrite. If your consistency doesn't line up with your example and your words, our kids and those we have influence over will question whether it's really true or if it's real or not, if we're not consistent. And lastly, if our words don't line up with our example and our consistency, then I think we're just a bunch of hot air. And they're just, just a bunch of hot air. Nobody's going to listen to us. Kids have a great sense of picking up and smelling things out before we do. They can smell a phony before we can smell a phony. So how do we live that example? How do we live that consistency? And how do we live that words? Um, there's, there's two thoughts I want to give you here, just two observations as we, as we close today. Uh, the first observation is this. First, love the Lord yourself. If we look at the first part of that scripture, the first part of that scripture says this. It says, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. I highlighted your up there uh, Obviously, that was in your Bible. I highlight that because he has to be your God first before he can be your kid's God. It's extremely hard to live out an example and extremely hard to be consistent in it and extremely hard to speak words of encouragement when you don't love God first. It comes out of an overflow of your own heart. And so how do you love God well so you can represent him well to the next generation, to the kids? So that's the first observation. Second observation is this. Stop believing the lies. Stop believing the lies that you can't do this. There's lies out there. You can do this. You can do this. The vision and mission of all the Zero Collective churches and here at Center Church for uh, Center students and Center kids is we partner with parents for the spiritual development of kids. That's, that's our vision. We partner with parents. We're kind of like the Home Depot, okay? You can do it. We can help, okay? You can do it. We can help. A dry cleaner parent says, you do it and we'll watch. And and when you get them all, bring, bring them back to us. That's not what we're called to be. God called us to be the spiritual developers of our children and to be influencers with our grandkids, to be influencers with our our neighbors, to be influencers with our kids that we are entrusted with in the neighborhood or in the school system, or wherever you come in contact with a child. That's what we are called to be. So that's what I want to challenge you today with. Stop believing the lies and love God first. And if you do that, God will honor that. And we'll be great parents together, influencers for his kingdom. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to worship you. 
We worship you through song. We worship you through the giving back of our tithes and offerings. And we worship you through the hearing of your word. Lord, I've read over that scripture a lot of times over my life. And uh, Lord, as I think through it, and uh, as I said earlier, I just didn't measure up on a lot of things. But Lord, you are a God of second chances. And you allow us to start fresh and new every day. So as I, as I stand here and I look over these, these fine folks here at the Center Church, Lord, I'm asking them to look into their heart and say, is today a new day? Is it today the day I draw the line in the sand and I set that example, I be consistent, and I speak words of affirmation and love over those I have influence over? For your glory, Lord, for your glory alone. I pray that that's, this is the day, Lord, that you allow them to do that. I pray this in your wonderful and matchless name. And all God's people said, amen.
Well, thanks for being here. Thanks for your attention this morning, and thanks for supporting John and Lindsay. Thank you for supporting the Center Church. Um, just what a privilege again it is to be with you. Uh, you are making a difference in this community. You are making a difference. Maybe you don't see it, but you are setting an example here for the community. And so I just want to encourage you to keep doing that. Continue to reach out. It's not about us in this room. It's not about filling every chair. It's about spreading the love of Jesus to our friends and to our neighbors to make an impact for Jesus in the Byron Center area. And you guys are doing that, so keep up the good work. Uh, John and Lindsay will be back next week. Uh, thank you for, your again, your attention. Can I just pray a blessing over you? If you, don't, if you feel comfortable, just go ahead and extend your hands. Let me just send a, send a blessing over you. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he shine, shine his face upon you. May you give, give you his peace and his grace. Go in peace. Have a wonderful Sunday. Enjoy. Thanks.